everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial for the Leagues of Votan. And today we are painting yet another League using the Hearthkin Warriors from the Leagues of Votan army set that was sent to me early by Games Workshop to review and paint up for all of you. So a massive, massive thank you to all of them. So today we are painting the Trans-Hyperion Alliance with their very striking orange colour scheme. And I'm very excited to do this. So without much further ado, we're going to jump in and start painting him. He has been primed in Wraithbone. And the colour we're going to be using first is Rattling Grime. We're going to be using this over the top of all of our Hearthkin Warriors clothes. So this is going to be the trousers. It's going to be the and the shirt as well. So with that rattling grime applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Griff Hound Orange. We're going to start applying this over the top of all of our warrior's armor. And you want a nice smooth coat here. So just take your time. Take each section very slowly. Just stick to the top of your brush. Just glide across those surfaces. up any excess as you go along. Just like this. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion. I'm going to use this on the boots, on the rest of the backpack, and on the gun, and the remaining areas of the gloves. And we're not painting in the belt and the pouches. Those are a different colour. These League's models like to have a fair bit of variation going on on them. One thing I should probably mention now before I forget it, is we're also going to use this Black Legion over the top of the knee pads and the elbow pads, including the little pipes. So with that Black Legion applied to all of those details like this, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde I'm going to use this to paint in the pouches and the belt. So with that Skeleton Horde applied, we're then going to take some Dark Oath Flesh. I'm going to apply this over the top of the face. And with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Wildwood. I'm going to apply this over the Dwarf's hair and any facial hair you might have. So in this case, it's got a moustache.
And so with that done, we're then gonna take some thinned down Iron Warriors. We're gonna use this to pretty much cover in all of our remaining details. So this is all of the kind of areas we haven't painted on the weapons, on the backpack, his belt buckle, the carabiner, any buttons scattered around. Any pipes that we haven't painted, all of it. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on, on our Trans-Hyperion Alliance Hearthkin Warrior. So it is now time to add some shades. Now the first one we're gonna add is Null Oil. And we're gonna be applying this over the top of all of the black, the rattling grime, and all of the metallics. So we're just gonna get this loaded up on our brush, and we're gonna start applying this over the top, just like this. You can, if you want to, also use this to shade the skeleton horde, just to take the edge off it a little bit and add a little bit more depth. So new shades let you do that. That's what we're gonna do, demonstrate it for you. Like so. So with that null oil applied all over, it's still drying at the moment, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is move on to shading all of the armor. And the color we're gonna be using for that is Fuegan Orange. We just wanna get this all over. Just like that, just add a little bit more richness and depth to the armor. So with that done, our Trans-Hyperion Hearthkin Warrior is now what I would call a war hipster battle ready. He's looking pretty cool. However, we are now gonna take him to the next level by adding some layers and some highlights. Now, whilst this orange is very pleasing and it's very easy to get to, the orange that is in the book is really quite bright. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna re-layer all of the armor with Fire Dragon Bright. Now you don't have to do this if you like this Color. Instead, you could highlight it with Fire Dragon Bright, but we're going to be relayering it here. And we're just going to take some of that on our brush. I'm going to very carefully now start applying this over the top of the flat panels of the armor. Now, Fire Dragon Bright is very, very bright. So it might take a couple of thin coats to just build it up. What you want to do, you want to just want to avoid the recesses like that. And you want to move on to the next panel. I'm just going to do this one just here. Like so. With that done, you should now have this gorgeous bright orange armor. So what we're gonna do now is gonna highlight it. And the color that we're gonna be using for this is Luganath Orange. And we just wanna take this very steady now because Luganath Orange is very, very bright. And we just wanna pick out all of the edges. In the armor. Just 
just like this. So with that done, the armour is now all finished, for now. <laughs> so what we're going to do is going to move on. I'm going to take some thinned down Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight the clothes. So with that done, it's now time to move on to highlighting all of the black details. And the color we're gonna be using for this is Rust Gray. So with that done, we're then going to take a teeny tiny amount of Fenrisian Grey. I'm going to add this to the corners and rivets and all the sharpest points. On our black details. So with that done, all of our black details are now finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Blade One Flesh. I'm gonna use this to highlight his face. So with that Blade One Flesh applied, we're gonna take a little bit of Black Legion. I'm gonna apply this over the top of his eyeballs. So with that Black Legion applied, we want to take a teeny tiny dot of Screaming Skull and apply this in each corner. Of the eyeballs. like that. So with that done, as you probably noticed a couple of takes ago, we actually missed off some parts of the hair and beard. We just got those little sideburns just there. But that's okay. So we've painted those in now with the same brown. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Bane Blade Brown. We're going to use this to highlight the hair and the beard and the moustache. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some Iron Hand Steel. We're gonna start highlighting all of our metallic details. So with that done, our Trans-Hyperion Alliance Arthkin Warrior is nearly finished. We've just got two things left to do. Now, I mentioned earlier that we weren't quite done with the armour, and that is correct. We have one last thing to do on the armour, and then we've also got the little lenses on the computer screens here and on this side as well. So the last thing we're going to do on the armour is we're going to take some thin down Corax White. I'm going to basically apply a stripe that is over the top of the kind of central part of the shoulders. And you've got this little white accent, which is very nice. So we're gonna go up to where we've done that highlight there and 
on the other side as well. I'm going to take it all the way down. Just like that. We're going to obviously clean that up a little bit in just a minute. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side as well. And might take a couple of thin coats to get this perfect. So just take your time. So with that done, just to finish him off, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Talisar Blue. I'm going to use this over the top of our lenses. There is not enough orange in Warhammer 40,000. And now... I think we're going to see a lot of orange armies. The Trans-Hyperion Alliance is a really, really, really nice scheme. I'm a big, big fan of this type of orange as well. Particularly like looking at it in the box art. Because you can get quite a fiery orange out of it, as we did in the video. But the one that we have in the book, it's a lot paler here. And it's just, I think it looks really, really good. It's, it's got that kind of industrial hazard warning. Which is just so, so, so nice to look at. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these awesome folks have done. And if you really loved this one and you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.